morning, I'm monitoring some bacterial growth by measuring something called the OD600, which stands for the optical density at 600 nanometers. Sounds really scary, but all it means is that we take this reddish light that's like 600 nanometer wavelength and we shine it through a solution in which the bacteria are growing. And we have a detector on the other side. Now, the more bacteria are, are in the solution, the harder it is for that light to make it through to the detector without getting lost along the way. There are a couple of ways why, in which light can get lost. One is if it's absorbed specifically by the molecules based because of their chemical structure. But we've chosen a wavelength at which the bacteria aren't going to absorb. Another way, though, is that they can get, the light can get scattered. And this is going to correspond to like the turbidity of the solution, which corresponds to how many bacterial cells there are and how big they are and their shape and things like this. So the more the bacteria multiply, the, the more turbid the solution is going to be, the more scattering you're going to have as the light passes through. Thus, the light is then going to hit the detector. And so we are going to get what we call like a higher OD value, so this optical density value. So the more light gets lost, the higher the OD, and in this case, the light's getting lost because of scattering, although in other cases, the OD might be high because of absorbance. So sometimes you see the terms OD and absorbance used interchangeably, but that's only in certain cases when you don't have to worry about scattering, and here we've chosen a wavelength where we're actually focusing on measuring that scattering and trying to absorb avoid measuring the absorbance. So here's a little bit more about it in detail as well as the math and how it works in practice. Say you have a sample and you shine some light through it and then measure how much makes it through the up to the other side. The amount that you measure is almost certainly going to be lower than the amount that you put in and this is because of a couple different things including absorbance and scattering. And so let's take these one by one. Let's start with absorbance. So absorbance is a, like a specific thing that corresponds to the structure of molecules that match the wavelength of the light. So basically, light is made up of these little pockets of energy called photons that travel in waves and different wavelengths have different photons. Um, and those photons might correspond to the ideal amount of energy for a particular molecule, or at least a part of the molecule. And so basically, if it matches, then what happens is that light gets absorbed. Um, if you want more on the details, I have much more in another post, but basically it excites an electron. So it's actually pretty cool. But the bottom line is that different molecules are going to absorb different wavelengths of light to different extents. And so if we were to take a molecule and we were to measure a bunch of different wavelengths and shine it at the, and take a bunch of different wavelengths and shine it at that molecule, we would see that there are certain wavelengths that absorbs more strongly and others it absorbs more weakly. And we can use kind of like the absorbance maxima to, to try to estimate concentration of various molecules using something called Beer's Law, and much more on that in another post. The important thing to note here is that the absorbance is going to be specific to the chemical makeup of the molecule. If you have light that matches that chemical makeup and you get that electron excited, well, now some of that light is going to be absorbed whereas other light that doesn't excite those electrons is not going to get absorbed. And so you're going to get all of the light detected at your detector. Now, what can also happen is that some of the light can be scattered. So instead of being specifically absorbed because it like matches that electron layout, this light is actually just kind of like bounced off. And so this light is going to get scattered. And the scattering is going to be based not on the chemical makeup of those molecules, but instead on like how many molecules there are, um, how big they are. So the size, shape, and density of the particles in the solution. So the more dense that solution is and the more light is going to get scattered. And this is also going to make it so that if you were to detect, put a detector on the other side where that detector has a limited um, limited size, so it's not going to be able to catch all these scattered waves, it's only going to be able to catch some of them, and therefore you're going to detect less light. If we want to quantify how much of the light is lost, we use this term called optical density, or OD, which is going to be a measurement of how much light is lost on the way through the sample. And so the more light is lost, either through absorption or scattering, the higher the OD is going to be. Whereas if all of the light makes it through, then you're gonna have an OD of zero. I've been saying OD, but typically when you see OD, there's a number after it. And this number is going to refer to the wavelength at which it was measured. 
So we're not talking about like specific absorption of that wavelength, but rather scattering, but we're still going to measure it at a particular wavelength. And often we wanna choose a wavelength that's not going to have strong absorbance. And so for example, when we do bacteria, we measure at a wavelength of um, 600, so like OD 600, this corresponds to like reddish light. A couple of reasons for this. One is it's low energy, so it's unlikely to just like fry the bacteria that you're measuring. Another reason is that basically molecu it, the molecules in bacteria, they typically don't absorb this color light. If you look across from red on the, on the color wheel, you'll see the color that molecules look if they absorb that color light. So if, if um, a substance absorbs like red light, it's going to look kind of greenish and your bacteria shouldn't look that greenish. Instead, your bacteria look more like yellow or orange, and so you wouldn't want to shine this blue or purple light at it. But this red light, that will work. And so we can measure the OD at 600 in order to measure the bacteria, um, the bacterial growth. And the reason why we'll want to do this is so that we know when we want when to express a protein. So basically in this technique called recombinant protein expression, which I talk much more about in other posts, we, we, get, um, we can get bacteria to make a protein for us on demand by adding this chemical called IPTG and much more on how that works in other posts. But what we need to focus on here is that when we add the IPTG, we'll basically get the bacteria to stop growing and start making lots of protein. In order to have enough of bacteria to have enough of those bacterial factories to make lots and lots of protein for us, we're going to need to allow those bacteria to grow before we inhibit their growth. And so what we want to do is we want to track the growth of these bacteria. This is a slide from, one, from a mammalian cell culture thing, but the basic idea is the same, is that when cells are growing, you kind of get this lag phase where this, they grow slowly, um, they're adjusting to their environment. Then you get this kind of like exponential or log phase, logarithmic growth phase where they double and double and double and double. Um, but then they reach the stationary phase where they kind of plateau because they run out of nutrients or space. And then you actually start to get a decline in the growth uh, because um, they don't have enough nutrients and they start dying out and that sort of thing. And so the kind of sweet spot is typically this mid exponential range. And we want to know when bacteria are in this range. And so we monitor the growth of the bacteria, which we can do by monitoring that OD600. Um, so often we do this in a cuvette. You can also do it on like a nanodrop. And you want to look typically for an OD of about 0.6 to 0.8 when you're working with LB. It's like kind of like the basic bacterial media that we use. If you're using a different media, such as like terrific broth, TB, this can grow to a higher density. So here you often want to go to an OD of like 1.4 to 1.8 to induce. Um, an important note though, is that the actual values that you measure are going to depend on your measuring device. Because if we look at how we're measuring this, basically we have this sort of like opening where we're going to be detecting the light. If that opening is bigger, we're gonna detect more of the light. And so we'll see a lower OD. But if the opening is smaller, then we'll detect less of the light and we'll see um, a higher OD. So the device is going to impact the actual value that you're going to record. Um, but typically people don't really seem to worry about that that much. Let's talk a little bit more about what the optical density actually means mathematically. I'm gonna leave the complex stuff to the physics, but the basics are this. It simplifies down to OD equals log 10 of I O um, I naught divided by IT. So basically the I naught, this is the incoming light. So the light that you shine at it, and then the IT is the transmitted light. So the light that actually makes it through to the detector. Um, so you have your incident light, and then you have the, um, the detected light. And so the more, the less light makes it through, the higher the OD. And because you have this log 10, basically a change of one OD represents a tenfold change in the light of the measured wavelength making it through. So at an OD of one, you'd have 10% of light makes it through. An OD of two is 1% makes it through. An OD of three is 0.1% of light makes it through, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm using these values because they're easiest to see, but when you're measuring like bacterial growth, you don't wanna go above an OD of one. And when you're in your um, cuvette, you're gonna get like less accurate readings. You're gonna be outside of the linear range. And so if you have a high reading, you're gonna want to dilute it before you measure 
and then take that dilution into account. So the more bacterial cells there are in there that can scatter that light, um, the more, the higher the OD. And then so they monitor this so you know when you're in that sweet spot to induce the expression. And then there are other plate times where you can measure the OD as well when you just want to track bacterial growth. And always remember to take a blank. So basically take a sample of the growth media before you add bacteria to it so that you can subtract out the background from your measurement. So you don't think you have more bacteria than you actually have just because there's some weird background scattering from that media. So that's the basics of optical density. Um, and so remember that is often used interchangeably with absorbance, but there are technically different things. If you're measuring, you can actually measure absorbance and still call it OD. Um, so sometimes you might see like OD200, I'm sorry, OD280 used when we're talking about um, measuring absorption of UV light to measure protein concentration or UV260 for nucleic acids, um, um, OD260 for nucleic acids. Um, those are actually measuring absorbance, whereas here we're measuring the scattering. But both of these um, types of things that make the light lost on its way through are going to be reflected in that optical density. We just measure at, um, kind of measure at wavelengths at which we're optimizing um, for one or the other. And so hope this helped you understand the difference and remember that often these terms are used interchangeably, OD and absorption. They technically mean different things and they can reflect different processes happening but if you see these terms, um, you can kind of interchange them in your head for practical purposes.